All right, if you like to go backpacking or kayaking and you like to bring some food along for multi-day events, um, you can go buy the uh, manufacturer brand dehydrated meals if you want to, or you can just bring junk food like Pop-Tarts and various other things, or you can make your own and you can make them so that they taste so much better than what you buy at the store and it costs so much less if you buy all the ingredients ahead of time when it's on sale dehydrate them and store them in the refrigerator in your cupboard and then you've got them ready to use but um, it's so much easier to do it yourself and it does taste a whole lot better give it a try and there it is i got it to a boil after letting it sit for a while wonderful tomato sauce black-eyed peas mushrooms diced chicken and I even had some bacon bits that I threw in there because I forgot that I had them. But a good looking dinner. Really, really nice. Put the oil in the pot, it keeps it from sticking into the pot, and your cleanup is very, very easy. Another favorite that I love to add into my dishes. Um, when I'm cooking out on the trail. I love beans and peas and things like that. Great protein, good source of energy, um, great taste. Um, I love to get some of these uh, brands where they've already seasoned the peas. Now you can go pick the peas in your garden, you can cook them and then dehydrate them, that's great. I don't have that capa uh, capability to uh, grow them in my, in my subdivision. My neighbors would kill me. So um, what we do is uh, we buy them in the can and we just pour them out. There's gonna be a little bit of liquid inside these cans, that's fine. Just go ahead, you can see this is kind of a thick pasty with the black eyed peas, that's fine. Um, drain off excess liquid, the rest of it you don't need to worry about. I know I did uh, have a can of black eyed peas here too, uh, bushes and um, they did have a lot of liquid in there so I drained off the excess liquid and then the other uh, remainder don't worry about it. So what you do is you just simply take a spoon and you just start working it again like you would with the sauces or anything else. Just start scooping it out in the middle and you don't want it to get up to the center ring this ring right here you don't want to get up to that because that can block your airflow but you just put it in the center it's incredible when you can have these spiced up peas and beans and all this kind of stuff like this, you lose the weight of this can and you lose all the water weight in the peas themselves. So what I do, and if I can, I'll take the edges of the, uh, the synthetic material and I'll kind of try to flare the end up so if it does have some runoff, it won't be messy. And I just spread it out like this. And you want to try to make sure that you don't have peas on top of peas, that you've just kind of got a single layer. So I'm smoothing it out and pressing it down just a little. I don't want to smush the, the peas. Now these peas and the beans are going to crack wide open. And it's going to look like, man, I've ruined it. What did I do wrong? And um, it's going to look like, man, this is not going to taste good or whatever. Don't worry about it, it's gonna be great. One trick that I've kind of learned as well is I will add some garlic and some other spices to um, the peas themselves. Now some of these are already spiced in the can, seasoned, and that's fine, but I'm a spiceaholic. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm sprinkling just one thin layer of the garlic. And then I've got the chili, uh, smoked paprika, garlic, and chives. And I'm gonna sprinkle that 
in there as well. Just a small layer of that. And that's gonna add kind of a garlic smoky flavor to what I've already got. And that's how you do it. And then I'm gonna put a layer of black eyed peas and, and on top of that, I'll go just like this. And then I'll do the same thing with the black eyed peas. I mean, I'm sorry, the black beans. I just got through with the black eyed peas. And you can see the, just the way they're prepared um, by the producer here. These are a little more solid. They're not as mushy, let's say, as the black eyed peas. They don't have all the mushy sauce stuff in it. That's fine. Uh, these things are gonna split wide open though. And I'll show you as it goes. Now I wanna try to push them away from the center core because I need to get a good airflow going. Spread them out with a spoon and try to get a single layer. You don't want them doubled up. You wanna to try to get a single layer That'll help that air flow. Now you're saying, God, that's really piled on there and there's a lot of it together. Eventually they're going to contract. The air is going to shrink them and uh, they're going to contract. Now some of these are going to stick together because of the liquid that's inside. And don't worry about that. Um, you're going to separate them with your hands. You're going to let them dehydrate for several hours and then you'll separate them and uh and then let them dehydrate the rest of the way you'll have to break them apart a little bit but easy way so i'll put the spices on this one as well put a little garlic on these maybe that helps keep the mosquitoes away when you're eating out at camp wherever your camp may be and then i've got the smoky paprika garlic chili and i'm gonna put a little bit of that on there Sprinkle that all in there. And then we're gonna start the um, the hydrator. I've got one more black eyed peas I'm gonna uh, put on there and then we'll start it. All the black beans and black eyed peas are loaded. And um, normally it would tell you that you'd have to do something uh, related to this peas beans and things like this about 122 degrees at about uh, anywhere from six to nine hours and i'm always going to say you got to add at least two three hours to that because it never seems to go um, like they like they have uh, i think these synthetic sheets you know also do a lot to block the airflow so it takes a little bit longer as well so i'm going to set the hours and um, let's see here, we'll set it to I'm going to set it to 12 hours and then I'll be stopping that in between and on the heat it says 122 and I'm going to do 125 so put the lid on Make sure everything is securely seated. And then eventually what we'll do is we'll stop it after about three or four hours. We'll rearrange the trays just to make sure they all get the same even amount of heat. And there it goes. We'll check back on it later. It's gone about four hours, four to five hours. And you'll notice there's just no liquid at all. Now these are still a little tacky to the touch. And um, some of them, you know, feel a little moist. Some of them are already starting to dry out. But what they'll do is they'll clump together because of that moisture. It was allowing them to clump together. So what you want to do is you want to separate those. Just kind of mix them up a little bit. Spread them back out. And then turn it back on. And that just allows the parts where they're meeting together uh, to dry out. So you'll just do that with all of them. 
these are the black beans. See the black beans, there's still a little bit of liquid on these. And you can see kind of how they're, you can see how they're kind of busting open, which um, I don't know how well you can see that, but it looks like the bean has just busted open. That's fine. Uh, that's going to rehydrate well. It'll still taste like black beans. You can see this side on this side right here is very wet. And so we'll just spread that out. Off the side. These are the, uh, the different style of um, black eyed peas that we had. This had kind of like a gravy kind of seasoning that came with it. And uh, so we're just going to break these up, kind of flip them over a little bit, put them back down. the last set of black eyed peas that I have right here. So we're gonna mix all of these up too. Loosen them up. Get them away from the center core. And then we're gonna restart these and uh, let them go. These are the black beans and you'll notice that um, the spices that I put on them are still on the, um, the beans themselves. So all those spices when you hydrate are gonna be back into your meal. So that's the black beans. Um, I combined the two trays of um, black eyed peas, but this is what you get for, this is two uh, sizable cans of black eyed peas. Uh, you really reduce the weight and uh, I'll pack these and uh, it'll be great for camping. I can add them to any dish. Okay, you want a great tasting meal, but you also want a meal that's really, really good for you. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna add some vegetables to that meal. And a lot of the um, traditional retail manufacturers of dehydrated foods don't give you a lot of the good nutritious vegetables. It costs too much and their meals cost a bunch as it is. So we're gonna do some broccoli uh, florets. And I bought these just in a bag uh, full of the uh, florets, easy to, easy to um, find them. And um, you can also buy the large broccolis on the stem. Uh, with the larger stems, you can cut the florets off and then you can slice the stems, which also have a lot of nutritional value, into thinner pieces and uh, you can do those as well. So you can do it either way. But, um, but you know, just know that uh, you put them in salt water. Uh, let them, I let them soak in salt water for about uh, maybe 20 minutes and that gets all the grit out of them if there's any grit in there dirt sand or whatever also if you've got uh, bug larvae or anything like that that's in there from out when it's out in the field growing in the field you'll take care of that and then after you do that for 20 minutes uh, you proceed to putting it on the uh, dehydrator one of the biggest issues you're going to have with the broccoli is being able to get it to fit on the dehydrator. Uh, also, you need to try to get uniform size. And you know, that's gonna be almost impossible because no broccoli floret is exactly the same as another one. But you just try your best. But obviously, you can tell this one's been cut in half and it still may not be able to accept the next tray on top of it. Now, if it's really close, don't worry about it because obviously these are gonna contract uh, once the moisture starts leaving them and they're dehydrated. So I went and I, I rinsed the salt water, drained it, and uh, I've started cutting them and placing them on. So you wanna try to, this one, this particular system, it's, you've got a lower height threshold towards the center and you can put a little more height towards the back. So you'll notice a lot of the big pieces are to the back. And if I got a small piece, I just put it on the front like this and I just try to keep that going. 
and you can put them a little close together if you want now see here's a big one this is not going to work so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that in half I'll split it and I'll make two out of it just like that but uh, don't worry if they're kind of close together because like I said they're going to contract and when they contract you know you'll have that space you can always rearrange them if for some reason you don't have an, you feel like you don't have enough space but um, anyway look for the smaller ones get them up to the front larger ones to the back you may have to cut them in half not a problem you just don't want to cut them so small that they'll fall through the grating and I like to not use a synthetic mat when I do these I like to let the air flow because it gets them from all sides and these florets are obviously pretty dense at the top so you need as much air movement as you possibly can get but um, anyway I'm going to do six crowns uh, worth of uh, broccoli and this is how you save your money when broccoli goes on sale buy a ton of it dehydrate it keep it in you can vacuum pack it keep it in your freezer after you've done it and you can keep that for a year or two if you want and um, you're good you can have broccoli anytime you want you bought it when it's the the least expensive and uh, you're saving a ton of money as opposed to buying a commercial dehydrated meal for camping or kayaking or whatever and um, it doesn't have near the nutritional value and you don't lose a single ounce of the nutritional value of this broccoli by dehydrating it. So I'll load the trays and then we'll get started. Alright I've got four and a quarter trays stacked up and I've really piled them up but like I said those are going to contract as time goes on so if it looks crowded on some of these under trays it is crowded but they're going to contract and so it'll make up for itself um, again you can use the stem there's nothing wrong with using the stem and what I like to do is I just slice them because they are hard and they are thick and so I'll just kind of slice them into dehydratable slivers there all right so I'm gonna put that at hundred and thirty degrees and um, I'll probably do it for about 10 hours and we'll check on them as time goes on we've got about five or six hours in the hydrating and um, there's two schools on this dehydrating with broccoli one of them says go ahead and steam the broccoli and help break it down a little bit before you put it in the dehydrator and the other one says you don't need to do that I've done it the steam way and it did work and I'm trying it the other way um, but you know that's those are options that you have now obviously you've got different size pieces in here right so we're at the point at a certain point where some of it is going to be done and this is where you're just literally going to have to go on there by hand and pick the smaller pieces up that are finished and load them in so there's a few of these in there and you'll probably have to do that with um, with each tray so you know you'll just take them apart one tray at a time I always put the smaller on mine I've got a larger grate on the outside and a finer grate on the inside so the smaller pieces always go to the inside and it's kind of good to group those because it helps you when it comes time and then a lot of these when they contract they will actually fall through the grating but you just pick them up when you get to the very bottom so you just harvest all the ones that are already done and uh, just you can tell by just feeling them they'll be dry and then when, when you've got the ones that are finished um, then you just uh, start start it back up again and keep going so I'll just do this one rack at a time and uh, 
Then I'll put the lid back on it, let the other ones finish. So here's all the ones that were the smaller ones. I just picked those off. The rest of them are still have some moisture in them. Um, because they contracted, I did have enough room on the um, on the uh, sheet here on the panel to clear the top deck out. So I'm actually going to put that on, and then the air will come off the top cap, and it'll help dehydrate some of these. So anyway, I probably got about another three maybe four hours easy before I finish this so I'll go ahead and start it back up keep it going